Hello, it just so happens that I actually had time this evening to play about and record a video. So this one is the web interface of the new BT Super Hub, Home Hub, Smart Hub, whatever it is, the the Smart Hub. So the newest router, which um, at the moment they seem to be sending out, which is in uh, July 2017. So the IP address is the same default one of 192.168.1254. And the web interface is a big difference to um, how their their previous web interfaces look like. It's uh, they've strayed so far. So their support routine is going to be entirely different for this. Or if you're looking after a client or a customer who has a BT Smart Hub, Super Hub, whatever the names are, um, it's going to be incredibly different for you as well. So first screen, it looks like you've got the broadband status, which on my one. Not a chance. I'm not plugging that into my uh, my internet yet. I might get round to setting, uh, making a, a fake test broadband setup for it. Um, so at least I can show you what it would look like uh, or some of the features if it was connected to a broadband network. Um, status basically of wireless, Ethernet, um, wireless light controls. So the brightness of the sorry, the status light controls. So the brightness of the status light. Um, hmm, performance test, which would be interesting to run, maybe if I get it going on a test setup, and um, advanced settings. So the first thing I'm going to look at is how you switch wireless on and off, because that's one that I think a lot of people either want to do to stop kids using the broadband, or they're worried about um, wireless emissions potentially harming their health. Um, not something I'm worried about, considering I've got like five or six access points around the house, which are on all the day, all day, every day. But there you go. Um, so I'm going to click on wireless because that's going to be, I think, the first place to start to turn wireless off. Yeah, that's that's not too bad. So wireless is on, and then it's got a big change settings button, which is a mm, very good start. So enter the admin password. This is on the little plastic pullout card which you can see on one of my other videos if you look um, through my video history around the time that I released this video I did several on the uh, home hub including unpacking it what's inside it actually if you take the circuit boards out um, and also how long it takes for the uh, hub to boot as well anyway so I'm going to fill in well wow. <laughs> uh, they've definitely gone mad with their wireless passwords as well you know, it's a much longer password than previous so I guess they're taking security quite seriously but Alright, so I'm going to fill in my admin password, not the wireless password. Uh, yeah, there you go, wireless off. That looks like it's fairly easy. So we've got you know, it's, it's smart channel hunting, where it can pick a channel. Um, rather than you putting it on a channel, I wonder actually where you'd tell it that you wanted to control the channels. Before I turn the wireless off, let's have a quick look at... Ah oh yeah, there we go. So you have to turn separate bands on to then be able to make your own choice of wireless channel. And that's quite interesting. They've stuck to the standards 1, 6 and 11. They won't let you choose any other one. That's very interesting. I wonder if I turn that off. Yeah, hmm. That's an interesting choice. And the same for the... Uh, 5 gigahertz, they won't let you choose granular channels. Um, not really sure how I feel about that, but yeah, it, it makes sense. A lot of people say you should w always stick to the these channels, and especially you shouldn't go above 11 because if you've got that restriction, might not last or uh, still apply anymore. But uh, devices from America and other countries couldn't go above channel 11. Anyway, back to the defaults: wireless off, save. Yes. And then back to home. Yeah, well, that was painless enough. That was pretty good. Let's turn it back on, though. But yes, yeah, you can see actually on the screen there they've gone mad with the passwords. Um, so they were used to be a lot shorter than that and didn't used to be a cross between capital letters and lowercase, so I can see that that might confuse people, especially when they're filling in the password on their mobile phones and they either enter everything in uppercase or everything in lowercase, even though the, the password on the sticker on the router is clearly um, the way it's supposed to be. What's this wireless mode? Oh, 
Oh, let's click the question mark wireless mode. So mode one gives you the fullest wire, uh, featured wireless, maximizing throughput. Mode two, some devices can struggle to use the latest wireless features, interesting. Mode three, reduce the features. I wonder if I put it in mode three, whether I'll then be able to change granular channels. It's taking a very long time to apply that change. OK. Uh, I'm going to go away and back into that screen just in case the web interface is bad. No, OK, interesting. So I would have thought possibly setting the mode would let you change, or, you know, change the compatibility of um, what channel to go on. But nope, apparently not. Bad steering, what's that? I eh, wonder why that's off by default. No weird. So band steering will automatically set your wireless devices to use the basically the best for each device, but a bit weird that it's off by default, but never mind. Web interface button to start the WPS rather than having to press the physical button on the device. Uh, what other things should we do? Let's have a look at the light control. So how granular... Mm, okay, <laughs> the brightness is uh, not very granular. Um, so either half the brightness, yeah, which actually on the on the device itself changes the brightness to half. Let's try it off. Mm. Seems to take longer to change the uh, LED to off than uh, than it does to change the brightness. Schedule, mm, okay. Also turn it on and off at certain times for people who have the router in their room and need to sleep in the room as well and don't want it um, lasering their eyes. Performance test. There's no chance that's going to work because I'm not connected to the broadband on it. Restart it. Smart setup. Oh, no. Alright, in fact, yeah, God, that is brilliant. In fact, I wonder if I'm not logged in, if um, if I can turn off the smart setup. Smart setup is the, the, the feature where if you, the first time you connect a mobile phone, the first time you connect a computer or a tablet, it talks you through installing BT's desktop help and just generally a lot of junk. So I, when I connect to a wireless network, I want to get online, so that's the first thing. So, smart setup, if you're smart, haha, <laughs> you'll turn it off. Um, right, let's see what else we can do under my devices. Not very exciting, but I don't have a lot plugged into it. Uh, advanced settings, what else can we do? VPN. Yeah, okay, that's to do with um, almost like port, f not really port forwarding, but security or, and, and NAT types, basically, dynamic DNS. What can we do here? Ah, good, supports no IP, unlike the early ver firmware versions of the Skyhub. Pretty good. Doesn't have a custom one, which is a bit annoying, so you can't use anyone, you can only use these, these providers, but that's uh, hmm, not too bad. Standard broadband settings, bid through the wireless, port forwarding, hee <laughs> hee, right, configuration. Ooh! That's good. So on the, and I've made a video about this and grumbled about it before, and a lot of people have, have been bitten by it before, where the older hubs automatically um, back port forward port 5060 through to, say, an asterisk server or a SIP device talking over port 5060, um, which is a pretty horrendous security problem if you're not expecting it to port forward stuff back to the, the device. Um, you couldn't switch that option off on the older hubs, whereas with this one, it looks like it's either, well, possibly off by default, um, or if not, one of these options might change that functionality, which is a good step forward. The most frustrating thing, it looks like, is there's still no option to enable ping on the internet interface, which is very annoying. Uh, how tedious is it to create a port forward? Ah, oh, I mean, that's super easy. Couldn't ask for more. 
some of the older routers were horrendous. You had to create an application and then go to the devices and assign an application to the device and no, so yeah, that's, that's pretty good. They're definitely going in the right direction with this router to make it me happy. Home network. IP configuration. simple enough as well, address table did not find a DHCP client which is interesting because my laptop definitely obtained a DHCP address from it but never mind so that's simple enough, IPv6 that's definitely not in their other routers so um, hmm. Hmm, very nice with a fairly decent, not really a firewall, but basically I guess this kind of not DMZs or turns off inbound firewalling to specific IPv6 devices which is also very nice. Technical log so unit serial number, the last time the firmware was updated mm, it's quite a long time ago. DSL rate which well, it's not connected, so it's not going to show anything. Wireless stuff, event log. Yeah. Hmm, interesting that it thinks a factory reset has been performed. I wonder when I, when I took it to bits, I might have jammed the reset button down or something. Yeah, it's... Uh, Interesting. Well, that's certainly more verbose than I remember the other devices, the old uh, home hubs being, which is pretty cool. Admin details. Hooray, good. Back up and restore. I bet if we back it up, it's not in a sensible format. Open it with Notepad. Go. You probably won't be able to see that window. Uh, some kind of binary blob, so it's either a zip or encrypted or proprietary but um, anyway at least you can back up and restore the settings factory reset it and on the front screen of there you've got restart the, the, the hub which is also a yeah, good idea if you're remote and it's doing something weird and you needed to, to reboot it yeah not too bad don't know how I can sign myself out of it though because I guess it thinks I'm signed in anyway uh, let me see whether I can swap you over to a different window that won't think I'm signed in. It's probably go horribly wrong. No, that's not selected the correct window. That one also hasn't selected the correct window. No, well that's frustrating. I can probably work it out by doing monitor capture. Yeah, there we go. That'll be pretty horrendous. Which one's the private one? There we go. So this one shouldn't think I'm signed in. Can I restart it? No, you can't. So that's a good uh, good test there. What stuff can you see if you're not signed in? You can see the channels. Interestingly, it has separate names for the um, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, unless that was uh, a setting that I had set. Let me just quickly check. Okay, no, I apologise, that's something I had set. Um, what else can you see? You can see the devices that are connected. Yes, if you're not signed in as an admin on the router. interesting it looks like non-admins can change the lights uh, so let's go back to wireless change settings yeah so I'm not signed in but any person so if you're running a public place an internet cafe or a, a cafe or um, you're just on a big network say in a student house then anybody can go to the BT super hub smart hub 
and oh, turn the status light off just to confuse people or um, make it dimmer or <laughs> say if it's in somebody's room they can wake that person up if they're sensitive to light by going into the uh, home hub control panel and clicking the uh, the brightest option Hmm, okay, well that's that's a bit silly, but okay. So yes, can't restart it. You can see what's connected on the network. You can see the broadband status. Hmm. Looks like you'd probably be able to initiate a speed test if I was connected without being signed into the admin interface. Can't turn smart setup on and off. So actually you can't do anything really other than change the, the wireless lights and see a couple of the, you know, the status of the things which are connected. Uh, let's see if there's uh, something else I'm interested in trying as well. Um, let's see what information it submits. So let's change the network name to test Wi-Fi. So network, save, post to JSON, what details or what information does it post? So, edit and resend. Mm, can we... There we go, session. Okay, it does have a session ID. So let's hope if I, re if I change that, it doesn't mess it up. What information does it post? Okay, we do have word wrap. Ah, okay, well we can tell that it's made by Sagem. So the uh, Sagem.com so Sagem make the new smart hub. So request ID, session ID. It's interesting it's got presumably the number of HTTP requests that have been sent, maybe. Hmm. Session ID, which I expect is something to do a unique number for me being signed in. User admin, data model internal. Yeah, that's, that's got to be kind of cross-site scripting prevention, which is pretty good. Tomato. This might explain quite a lot as to why it doesn't seem to be too awful if it's based on Tomato, which is a an open source router. Um operating system. Interesting. Anyway, that wasn't the one which changed my Wi Fi settings, it looks like. So what changed my Wi-Fi settings? Also, what information came back? Ooh, lots of it. Um, where do I get the actual raw response? Aha. Uh -huh. No? Cookies, e cookies, parameters. There's the, the form data. So set value, Wi-Fi SSID parameters test Wi-Fi and then all the other information which I didn't change. Authentication key. Mm -hmm. Clever, right. Um, yes, what information did I get back? Lots. <laughs> um, what are these ones that it's retrieving otherwise? Nondescript. Hmm, interesting. Um, I do wonder if it's based off of Tomato, but I expect somebody else will do all that proper kind of download the firmware, hack it kind of thing later. Um, what? <laughs> the bt.com homepage links to products and services. It looks almost like they've stolen the header from the bt.com website. That's a bit slack, lazy. 
So, yeah, maybe another another pointer to Sagem as well there. Proprietary uh, property of Sagem. Property of Sagem who've gone and clearly copy and pasted it from uh, bt.com. But there we go. Apparently, uh, my router is bt.com, selling stuff to people. What other stuff do we have? Mm, a bit of ad muncher script in there from my advert killing software. And then a lot of JavaScript. Hmm, interesting. Oh, there you go. I was bored, and I had the time to uh, to look all that up. So I thought I'd video it. Hope you enjoyed it.